Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from patron Ron Winkler. By the way, if you are a patron, there is a special way that you can get in touch with me that circumvents email and things like that. He says, uh, this is N5AUA, um, Ron Winkler. He says, uh, big fan, Dave. Thank you very much. Which is better, solid state amp or tube amp? Could you talk pros and cons of each? Thank you, sir. Well, which do you like more, an apple or an orange? I mean, they're different beasts entirely. Before we jump into answering the question, I'd like to pay a special thank you to um, one of my latest patrons, David Glein. And David has signed up on patreon.com slash ke0og, and you can too. Pick a way that works for you. Uh, I can talk a little bit about them. Of course, tube amplifiers traditionally have been the choice uh, for hams wanting to run higher power. Now, my amplifier, which is an ALS uh, 500M, which is put out by Ameritron, and is still available in a somewhat earlier form, will put out 600 watts uh, PEP uh, very easily. And I found it really does help uh, to get to those stations I can hear, but they don't hear me. Uh, now, the thing about a solid state amplifier is the output is 50 ohms, period. So either you have antennas that are properly set up, which is what I strive to do, or you have to put a high power tuner after the amplifier. And, the, and a tuner that can handle 1500 watts can cost more than $1,000. So you have to put the tuner in there. Now, uh, the thing about transistors is if you treat them correctly, they last forever. They won't uh, burn out or anything like that. And if they do, uh, you can get replacements for them. They're not inexpensive. They're probably over a hundred dollars each, but that's a lot less than buying some of these tubes these days. Um, a tube maker that for many years supplied the amateur market, iMac, um, still makes tubes, but they've pulled out of the amateur market. Uh, they make tubes that bring them more money. And uh, there are still enough of those new old stock tubes around that companies like Ameritron and so on are making amplifiers that will use those tubes. Now, if you treat one of these tubes properly, it should last many, many, many years. Uh, some of the smaller tube amplifiers use 811s and so on. Now, where do tubes come from these days? iMac was the American manufacturer of tubes. Um, tubes now come from Bulgaria, uh, Russia, um, and so on. So they're, they're getting harder to get. Now, th because of the Russian crisis uh, and everything going on with the Ukraine and the stoppage of trade with that, uh, we are finding that tubes are getting more expensive those who are uh, audiophiles, who like listening to music, love tube amps. A lot of guitar players want tube amps. And so there are a couple companies in the U.S. that are starting to make tubes. So we're going to see a little bit more of this on shore. But as far as these higher power transmit tubes, we'll have to see. The market is for amateur antennas and amateur amplifiers. And there just aren't that many hams who have amplifiers. What? A few thousand, several thousand. Okay, that's not a big enough market for iMac to have kept supplying tubes for the amateur market. Now, um, so a tube amp has filaments, it has to be powered. Any amp, whether tube or transistor, that works at full legal limit output power uh, needs 220 volts in your shack. So you're going to have to either run that line yourself 
with pull a building permit to do that, get it inspected. Now, why would you want it inspected? Because if something happens and your house burns and the insurance company finds out you put in um, an unpermitted uh, electrical circuit, you can run into real problems with your insurance. Your insurance requires that that sort of thing needs a permit. Now, uh, a lot of states allow owners of homes to do their own electrical work, um, but you still need to pull that permit, okay? Uh, a lot of, a few states I think don't. You have to get a licensed electrician. For a 220 circuit, I would recommend a licensed electrician to get that thing put in for you. I realize they're not cheap, but hey, you're going whole hog here, so. Okay, so let's look a little bit uh, you don't have the tubes. Uh, tubes can soften with time. And a 500 watt amplifier can gradually put out less and less. And then you have to refresh the tubes. So you've got that problem. Tubes are also fragile. Uh, no matter whether you get a uh, transistor or a tube, you're going to have a lot of weight to deal with. Okay, So you've got to have somewhere to put it. And because it's a class A amplifier, it's inefficient. It's only about 60% efficient. So the other 40% comes into your room as heat. And it's a great way to heat a room in the winter. It's also a great way to really heat a room in the summer. So you may need to get some extra cooling uh, where you're gonna do this thing. The tube amp has in its output circuit, what's called a Pi network, a Pi network, uh, one of the capacitors is labeled plate, the other is labeled load. Okay, and those are two legs of what's called a Pi network, and it is topologically equivalent to an antenna tuner. Now, the 50 ohm amps, the transistor, don't have an, anything like that. They don't need anything like that. They need to feed 50 ohms. Whereas a lot of people who have tube amps find they don't need an external tuner because they can load right into the impedance of the amplifier, uh, whatever it may be. So you can look at that. If you buy the transistor, you probably will want to get a tuner to protect the, the amplifier. You can get amplifiers that will automatically recognize your band and tune accordingly. So on mine does not. So if I reach down here and flip this thing to 40 meters and then I transmit on 20, I'm going to get a fault. The thing will drop out. Okay. This is, by the way, the power supply for it, which is about as big as that. That's a 12 volt amplifier. It's designed for mobile use and it draws 80 amps. It's uh, a pretty power hungry and the, the, it's designed to draw directly from a battery. And the guy who had this before me uh, used a welding cable to go all the way to the battery to get the full amount of current that he needed. Um, cost, let's look at cost. It used to be that the transistors were definitely more expensive than the tube. That is not necessarily the case anymore. They're starting to reach parity. Um, if I had the druthers of going for a tube amp or a, a transistor amp, I'd go with the transistor. But th these amplifiers sell themselves on features. Um, some of the MFJ amplifiers, um, here's one right here. This is a, a solid state amplifier and it's uh, 1.2 kilowatts, it's four grand, okay? Here's another amplifier on the screen. This one right here is a 1500 watt amplifier, but it's six grand, okay? And it actually will, you know, and you've got the plate and tune. See plate and load right there, those are the two legs of the Pi output circuit, and they tune the output tube directly into the antenna. Here's the output tube, 
And this is one expensive tube because that single tube does all the work. Okay, and you've got all kinds of transformers and stuff like uh, that that you've got in there. So uh, I think the pricing's parity. One other I want to to look up is um, okay, Elecraft. Let's go to Elecraft K4 transceiver products. We want amplifier. Amplifiers. Okay, here's the 400 and f the 1500 watt amplifier from Elecraft. This is obviously all transistor, the KPA 1500, and it, it, there's no dollar figure for it uh, because there's so many options that you can get with it. Let's see if DX Engineering has the Elecraft. Electraft amplifier. Now it doesn't look like they carry it. Got a watt meter. There's another watt meter. A watt meter, a watt meter. Antenna switch. I don't see the amplifier itself. Um, okay. So uh, that you may have to get it direct from let's let's see shipping status support here, quick order okay amps amps the fifteen hundred watt amp is seven sixty seven hundred dollars okay a very nice little amplifier so you're getting an idea of the prices for the full legal limit. Now, I will tell you this, before you go legal limit on the amplifier, remember the amplifier only helps your signal on the way out. And if you can't hear them, you can't work them. So the first thing you're going to want to do, if you're gonna go for a $6,000 amplifier, first put up your tower and put a beam on top of it and get some good coax in there. And that'll help you both on transmit and receive. And then you can try different size amplifiers. I have a hex beam out there and a 500 watt amplifier, and the two are matched up very nicely. Okay. So, tube amplifier, old technology, some of the newer tube amplifiers can connect to your radio and do your tuning for you. The old alpha amps do that. Uh, but they were about seven grand, and that was 20 years ago. Um, the transistor amps are becoming stronger with more protection circuits to keep from zapping that. Um, on some of these, you can actually even short the output without affecting the uh, amplifier because it has protection circuits in there that protect those things. You will uh, want to make sure that your antenna system is in good shape, okay? So that you don't need that antenna tuner, but you may end up getting it anyway. The place the antenna tuner goes is between the amplifier and the antenna. So there's a lot of power running in there. You definitely, depending on how much power you run, I run 500 watts, RG8 will handle that. Although I use LMR400 and RG213 uh, to go to the various uh, antennas. So it's becoming a wash between the two. And what we are going to see is that the transistor amplifiers are going to slowly push the tube amplifiers out of the market, just like the transistorized radios from Japan push the American tube equipment out of the market. This will take another five to 10 years, but then everything's going to be transistor. So if you kind of want to future-proof yourself, get an amplifier that is um, very uh, modern, has all the features, automatic band switching. Um, of course, there will be an ALC that runs back to your radio. Some of the amplifiers uh, can even detect distortion and go back and do something in the 
transmitter that will pre-distort the signal so that it sounds correct when it comes out. That's a really interesting and weird feature. So bottom line, I used to say the tube amplifiers were cheaper, the transistor amplifiers less hassle. However, it's starting to become parity. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Um, so there you have it. We've taken a look at amplifiers, kind of the current status of amplifiers in the market. You don't have to get a full legal lim limit amplifier. Mine's only 500 watts, and it makes a huge difference. This one here that's 1,200 watts, okay, is very close to 1,500 watts. And if you look at the decibel difference, it's not very much, and you can get a significantly less expensive amplifier companies that make them, Elecraft makes them, uh, ICOM, Kenwood, and Yesu all make them. Very expensive amps, uh, and they're transistorized. And uh, of course, you've got Ameritron, and I think MFJ itself makes uh, some amplifiers. And there will be others too. There's a German company that sells them as kits, so you can save some money building your own. If you're not a very good builder, I'd avoid that because that'll be a different, a difficult construction project. So there you have it. Uh, if you'd like to help support this channel financially, go to decastlercom slash support and pick a way that works for you. And until we next meet, 73.